As he nears the boards, Cassian comes to a spinning stop, recklessly swinging his stick and striking Gagne in the face and breaking his jaw. It's also important to note that Cassian begins the act of swinging his stick before he crashes into the boards. And while we accept Cassian's assertion that he did not intend to strike Gagne in the face, he is, however, responsible for the consequences of swinging his stick in this instance. I have a confession to make. I have disliked Zach Cassian for a really long time. There's no doubt in my mind that when he missed that body check on Sam Gagne, he intentionally swung his stick at him. I, probably next to Alex Burroughs, I don't think there's a player that I've had less respect for. Uh, he seems selfish, cowardly, and really quite obnoxious. And none of these are admirable characteristics. So do I agree with the Oilers giving him another chance? Well, let me tell you a story. Back in the early 1970s, there was a young up-and-coming hockey player named Alan Wendell. He could skate like the wind, and he put up huge point totals at every level he played. At age 15, Alan left home to pursue better hockey opportunities. However, this gave him more freedom for drinking, girls, and skipping out on school. In 1973, Alan's drinking accelerated and dedication to his once promising hockey career was slowly starting to decline. In September 1974, Alan was cut from the Red Deer Rustlers in favor of a younger player from Viking, Alberta. From there, he wound up in Hinton, where he played four years for the Northwest Cardinals. His play continued to drop off, but his drinking picked up. In March of 1976, Alan got a job at the local pulp mill, but due to his frequent partying, he was an unreliable employee and nearly lost his job. Then, on June 3, 1976, Alan was drinking and driving on his way home from a friend's house in Devon when he got into a fatal car accident. He was charged with criminal negligence, causing death. In the midst of Alan's court proceedings, his fiancée broke off their relationship. Much like Cassian, after a hockey career full of potential, Alan had hit rock bottom and was in need of redemption. And thanks to God and the people around him, he was given a chance to put his life back together. After serving his sentence, he would marry Carrie Ann in February of 1979. They're still married today and have three children and ten grandchildren. Alan continued to work at the pulp mill for 14 years, eventually being promoted to shift supervisor. Later on, he became an ordained minister and pastored a church in southern Alberta for 16 years. Now you might be wondering, why did I use this story? There's probably plenty of well-publicized stories of redemption that I could have used as an example. Well, there's two reasons that I told this particular story. One is that I wouldn't be here to tell it if Alan Wendell Robinson hadn't turned his life around. And the second reason is, no matter how badly somebody's messed up their life, there is always hope that they can turn things around. I didn't know this about Cassian until after the Oilers traded for him, but I guess he lost his dad when he was just eight years old. So I have a little more sympathy for the guy. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't excuse some of the things that he's done. I just feel like I understand a little better where he's coming from. So I really do hope that he turns his life around and maybe he'll wind up being a big part of the Oilers future. And if he does, he'll fill a role the Oilers have been lacking since Rafi took, no, probably since Mike Greer left the team in 2002. He's got the size, and he's got the raw talent to really excel. He just needs to start making better decisions on the ice and especially off the ice. Let's hope he does. I'll see you next week.